Thank you for attending the Kentucky Public Pensions Authority Frequently Asked Questions webinar. My name is James Isaacs, and I'm a retirement benefit consultant in the Division of Member Services. Joining me today is a KPPA representative that will manage your questions within the Q&A forum at the end of the webinar. During the presentation today, we ask that you keep in mind Kentucky Revised Statute 61.661, which requires KPPA to administer your account in a confidential manner. Please do not share sensitive information such as your Social Security number, your member ID, or your KPPA PIN. If you have specific questions, please contact a KPPA counselor at 1-800-928-4646 with your four-digit PIN to discuss confidential information on your account. During today's webinar, we'll have a brief Zoom tutorial. Then we'll have several of our most frequently asked questions that we have compiled over the past several webinars, as well as ones that we are often asked about when members call or email our office. At the top or bottom of your screen, you should see a Zoom toolbar. On that toolbar, you should have the options to click Reactions, Raise Hand, or Q&A. At the far right corner of the toolbar, you'll notice there's a Leave Meeting button. If you're having technical issues during the webinar, or if you need to leave the meeting at any point throughout the presentation, simply click on Leave Meeting to excuse yourself. If you're unable to stay the duration of the meeting, I hope you'll review a recorded version of the webinar online, or you can join us for another live webinar in the future. The question and answer function is used to ask general retirement questions to the KPPA representatives after the end of the webinar. Q&A is the preferred method to communicate your questions as it allows our staff to answer them chronologically and it ensures that no question goes unanswered. Our most frequently asked question is, can I take an emergency withdrawal or a hardship loan from my KPPA account? And can I borrow against my KPPA balance? There are no provisions that allow for withdrawals or loans against your account balance if you are active in participating in KPPA. The only time KPPA pays funds to members is at retirement or if a member takes a refund of contributions after terminating employment. A refund forfeits any future retirement benefits. How do I obtain a personal identification number, or what we refer to as your PIN number? To receive a new PIN, you can call us and verify your address or your email address. You can also go into Member Self Service and mail or email a PIN to yourself in the registration process. Additionally, KPPA mails a new PIN to all employees once they are first reported. How do I know if I am enrolled in CERS or KERS? KERS stands for Kentucky Employees Retirement System, and it is the retirement system for state employees and employees for health departments and state universities. CERS stands for County Employees Retirement System, and it is the retirement system for cities, county agencies, fiscal courts, fire and police, EMT, soil and water conservation districts, area development districts, and for classified employees of school boards. You can also call us with your PIN or look at member self-service under account summary. Is part-time work available for purchase? Part-time service is available for purchase if any months of the service exceeded 100 hours or 80 hours per month over days worked if you are a classified school board employee. My position recently changed from non-hazardous to hazardous. Can I switch my retirement to all hazardous service? Tier 1 and Tier 2 members can convert non-hazardous service to hazardous if the position a member worked as non-hazardous has changed to hazardous duty. It is not extra service. The non-hazardous becomes hazardous for eligibility, health insurance, and retirement calculations.
I only need five months of service to be eligible to retire. Must service purchases be bought in 12 month increments? Most of our service purchase types can be purchased in its entirety or in 12 month increments. Omitted and recontribution of refund costs must be purchased in their entirety and cannot be purchased in increments. I am interested in purchasing service credit, but how are service purchases calculated? Most of our service purchases are based on an actuarial calculation. It multiplies your current rate of pay or final compensation, whichever is higher, by the number of years you wish to purchase and an actuarial factor that is based on your age, service, system, and plan. If I have 16 years of service and leave employment and am Tier 1, will I remain Tier 1 if I return to employment at a future date? Yes. If you leave your contributions alone after termination, you will retain your accrued benefits and eligibility. If you take a refund of those contributions, you lose any accrued retirement service and void your retirement eligibility. How do leave balances such as annual or compensatory time work? For annual leave, the member may be paid depending on the employer policy, but it does not figure into your retirement calculation, eligibility, or payment. For compensatory leave, for Tier 1 members, they are paid upon termination, and that amount is included in the last month's salary. For Tiers 2 and 3, the compensatory leave is paid to the member at termination, but it is not included in the retirement calculation. How does sick leave work at the time of my retirement? Sick leave policies change based on tier, system, and the employer if you are within CERS. KERS and SPRS employees use standard sick leave. To determine how many months you receive, Take the number of sick leave hours you have, divide it by the hours per day you work, then divide by 21. Round up or down accordingly. This will give you the months of sick leave you are awarded at retirement. Tier 1 members have unlimited sick leave. They can be used both for retirement eligibility and health insurance vesting. Tier 2 members are limited to 12 months and it cannot be used for retirement or health insurance vesting. Tier 3 members cannot use sick leave. CERS employers may offer their employees standard sick leave, alternate sick leave, or have no sick leave policy at all with KPPA. Some employers pay retiring members a percentage cash payout and the remainder is used towards service. This is standard sick leave. Others pay a portion and that cash payment is reported to us as creditable compensation and the associated service is also included in the retirement calculation. This is alternate sick leave. The same rules apply for Tier 2 and Tier 3 as for state employees. The county employers may have a cap on how many months of sick leave you can use at retirement. How do I determine which retirement benefit factor to use? Your benefit factor is a percentage, and it is based on your system, plan, participation date, and service months if you're a Tier 2. You can call us with your four-digit PIN, or you can run a benefit estimate in Member Self Service to find out your benefit factor. What is the Special Early Factor? The Special Early Factor is a percentage penalty that is applied to members who retire before reaching full or unreduced retirement. It remains with the member for their lifetime, and it is 6.5% for each year short of full retirement based on your age or service, whichever leads to a smaller penalty. What is the maximum number hours of compensatory time that can be used at the time of my retirement? The maximum amount of compensatory leave that can be used at retirement is 240 hours. If I roll over my compensatory leave balance to deferred compensation at the time of retirement, is it still considered a payout? Yes. 
Even if you roll your comp time payout over to deferred comp, the KPPA employee contribution will still be withheld and it will be reported to KPPA and used in your retirement calculation for Tier 1 employees. What is the difference between sick leave service and purchased sick leave service? Sick leave service is the amount reported by your employer at the time of retirement and is used in your retirement calculation. There is no cost to you at the time of retirement for this sick leave service. However, some CERS members have the ability to purchase sick leave that may be in excess of what their employer will pay for. At the time of retirement, KPPA will send you a billing for this sick leave and you may choose to purchase it if you wish to. I like to be well prepared. Is there any documentation I can send to KPPA now in advance of my retirement? Yes. At the time of retirement, we do require birth verification for both you and your beneficiary. This can be copies of driver's licenses, copies of passports, or copies of birth certificates. If you submit a birth certificate and your name has changed since birth, we also need name change verification. You can submit these any time to our office via member self-service or by mailing or faxing in those copies. That way we do have them on file when you ultimately retire. Is there a maximum number of years of service? Is there ever a time that your monthly benefit will not increase due to having so many years of service? Actually, no. Since your benefit is based on a mathematical formula, and at least one number will always go up, your benefit will continue to increase. There may be a time that your retirement check will be more than your work check, but that typically takes a lot of years to reach. Tier 3 members receive a 4% employer pay credit, but my employer pays over 20% to KPPA on my behalf. What happens to the rest of the money? Employer contributions are paid into KPPA's general fund, and that money is in turn invested. And then the invested returns are used to pay the lifetime benefits to all of our retirees after the member contribution account has been exhausted. The retirement calculation states that I am retiring under early retirement, but I have 35 years of service. Why does it state early retirement? All non-hazardous members who retire before age 65 are considered early retirement, regardless of service. It is a statutory term. Retiring at age 65 or over would mean normal retirement. It is not meant to imply that there is a penalty. If my employment was at KERS, Kentucky Employees Retirement System, and is now at TRS, Teachers Retirement System, are the rules any different? Yes. Teachers Retirement System has different retirement calculations than KPPA, but with reciprocity, the service used between both systems is used towards overall retirement eligibility, and the salaries at both systems are used to determine benefits. To learn more about your retirement calculation, if you do have service with Teachers Retirement System, contact them at 1-800-618-1687. Can I receive a monthly benefit from KPPA and benefits from Social Security without being reduced? Yes. As long as you paid into Social Security in a participating position, you are eligible to draw both as far as KPPA is concerned. However, if you or your spouse worked in a position that did not pay into Social Security, such as a teacher or paid into railroad retirement, there may be a Social Security reduction. You should contact Social Security in this situation. What is pension spiking? This has become one of our most popular questions over the past several years. Since 2018, KPPA reviews the last five salaries of retiring members and compares those salaries to those of the previous year. If there is a greater than 10% increase from the previous year, the creditable compensation used for that year may be capped and the final compensation as a result would be reduced.
There are statutory exemptions that may allow for the higher compensation to be used, even if it exceeds 10%. Some of these exemptions would be a compensatory leave payout, an alternate sick leave payout, mandated overtime, or overtime that is due to a declared state of emergency. There is also a $25 exemption applied to all retiring members that states that if a spike is found and causes a less than $25 change in the monthly benefit, that spike is disregarded. Additionally, any spike penalty for others is reduced by $25 on the monthly payment. Why can't I name multiple beneficiaries when I retire? The payment options for retirement are actuarial calculations, which are calculated using the ages of the member and a single beneficiary. There is no ability for KPPA to pay a benefit to more than one person, so there can only be one person when calculating the survivorship benefits. Where does the money come from for my benefits when I retire? When a member retires, the monthly payment is first paid from the member contribution account, which is the total of the member contributions and accumulated interest. Once that account is exhausted, the member's remaining lifetime payments come from the KPPA general fund. Once you retire, if your beneficiary predeceases you, can you name a new beneficiary? It's a non-survivorship option when you retired such as a basic life with 10, life with 15, life with 20 years certain, you can change your beneficiary at any time, even if the beneficiary you have listed is still alive. If your beneficiary passes away before you and you should remarry or, or marry for the first time, you have the option of naming that new spouse as your beneficiary and having your monthly payment recalculated using a survivorship option. If I choose my child instead of my spouse as my beneficiary, will this cause my monthly payment to decrease? If you choose a survivorship option and use a child instead of a spouse as beneficiary, this will cause your monthly payment to go down. This is because KPPA will be paying a monthly benefit to someone for a longer period of time after your passing based on the beneficiary's age. Do state employees have the same life insurance options after retirement? Retirees from state agencies have the ability to continue the state's life insurance policy. However, KPPA does not administer this. Contact your HR representative before you retire if you wish to continue life insurance coverage. KPPA offers a $5,000 death benefit payable to a named beneficiary. This is a benefit for all retirees who retire with at least 48 months of service. I currently have insurance through my spouse. I do not have to take the insurance through KPPA. Is that correct? That is. If you have coverage through your spouse, you can waive coverage with KPPA. You can pick it up in the future during open enrollment or via a qualifying event. However, KPPA does not offer any monetary benefit in lieu of waiving the coverage. Will I be able to add my spouse to my insurance upon retirement? Yes. You can add a spouse or children to your insurance and have a couple, a parent plus, or a family plan, or if you're Medicare eligible, you and your spouse can both be covered on single Medicare eligible plans. If I move to another state after I retire, Will I still be able to use my insurance? Plans currently offered by KPPA via Anthem or Humana are nationwide plans and have comprehensive networks for providers, pharmacies, and hospitals. I was told that once I retired, I cannot work for three calendar months. Is that correct? Effective January 1st of 2024, all retirees must observe a one calendar month break after their effective retirement date before returning to employment with the participating agency. You may be able to return to a private sector job immediately after retirement. 
However, you should check with our legal department first. I wish to work for a contractor after I retire, and they have contracts with the state. Should I contact your legal team before I begin employment? Absolutely. Send us a letter with the place you wish to work and as much information you can about the nature of the work and how it contracts with the participating KPPA agency so we can give our best determination and avoid any negative impacts on your retirement. What taxes are deducted for my retirement check? KPPA payments are considered taxable by the IRS, and the IRS uses the same tax tables that are used while you're employed. You can choose to have no taxes withheld and pay them yourself at tax time. Your payments are also considered taxable for state purposes, but there's an exemption amount that only considers higher income for taxation. This next question is a very hot topic amongst our retirees. Are there any cost of living raises after I retire? Pursuant to statute, KPPA can only award a cost of living adjustment or COLA to retirees if either the COLA is pre-funded by legislation or the funding level of the retirement system you retired from is over 100% funded. The last cost of living adjustment was awarded in 2011. I worked in Kentucky and I draw a benefit from KPPA, but now I live in Florida. How are the state taxes handled? Retirees who live in another state will be under the tax laws of that state, not Kentucky. It is possible that pension income is taxed differently there than in Kentucky. Check with that state's revenue cabinet. How does a beneficiary collect the $5,000 death benefit when a retiree passes away? When KPPA is notified of the retiree's passing, we notify the beneficiary listed on file. We require a certification of the beneficiary's information on a form, a tax form, and a copy of the member's death certificate. We are often asked, what is the best retirement payment option for me to take? How should I have my taxes withheld? And what is the best insurance for me and my spouse? KPPA employees are not financial advisors, tax experts, or insurance specialists. We cannot offer advice beyond the numbers and how they are calculated. If you're not sure about what options are best for you, you should contact a financial advisor or tax attorney. How does someone reach KPPA to ask questions? Our mailing address is Kentucky Public Pensions Authority, 1260 Louisville Road, Frankfort, Kentucky, 40601. Our toll-free phone number is 1-800-928-4646. Our website is kyret.ky.gov. And our self-service website is myretirement.ky.gov. Our legal notice concludes the Frequently Asked Questions webinar. We'll stick around as long as we need to answer your questions within the Q&A forum. This presentation, of course, is intended for general information reference only. So if you do have specific questions regarding your account, please contact us at one 800 928 Four six four six. On behalf of myself and the other KPPA staff, we thank you for attending today's webinar. We wish you well and ask that you take time to complete a brief survey that will be emailed to you within the next day. Thank you and have a great day.